quick one for today, I think. One from the archive of many, many miniatures, these being from Burrows and Badgers. The skirmish game of anthropomorphic animals uh, by Michael Lovejoy and Osprey Games, which is kind of a cross between The Wind in the Willows and Necromunda. And loads of fun, characterful, animalistic artwork by Gary Chalk, albeit none, as far as I can tell in the rulebook, of otters. Which, of course, is why we're gathered here today, and as you can see from the stats over here, they are large beasts, slightly on the pricier side at 51 points, but pretty good all-rounders. This is a game where you, uh, the better you are, the, you know, the advantage is built into the dice you roll, so if you're not very good, roll a d6, for whatever the thing is, the action is, and if you're, and, and it goes up to you know d8s, d10s, and you can advance the necromunda type table to like d12s. So d8s pretty pretty solid, and they come in at uh, you know d8s for striking, d8s for shooting at range, d8s for nimble at ducking, and so they're you know they're pretty good across the board, and strong one, which means they can put the boot in if they actually hit you. A little bit and of course they can swim which in most games means if you've got like little rivers and ponds and stuff which you always do in these kind of setups you always end up kind of outflanking the enemy he doesn't expect you to just rush across the river the pirate otter first now the question here is whether the yellow looks a bit unnatural and glowy i kept the um Eye patch simple because again I've realised with black you know black doesn't reflect light so there's no point in highlighting it multiple times. His massive cudgel like, sharp like saber. I think all the various bits of shrubbery you can get. These from Hobbycraft just from the train. The, the miniature gauge train sets quite you know plus the uh, the flowers you can get from Warlord Games um, really does give the sense of the forest critter the hat again I realise there's no point in highlighting the red of the bandana too much if you're just going to put white spots all over it and the white spots I put a kind of very lightish you know, a white greyish spot and then put a bit of a dab of white in the middle just to give it some three dimensionality. Ah, the Landsknecht Otter. I mean, the danger with these guys is they can take longer to paint than all the others if you go wild with the colours. So I only chose basically two colours and I suppose the yellow to bring it out. Um, and again, kept highlights relatively to a minimum. Dabbing a bit of silver with some packaging material really, again, saves time because you just do a dark metal a wash, possibly a bit of black and blue, and then some thinner into it. Some of the, the, the paint medium thinner. And that gives a kind of a used look. I mean, these guys run through the undergrowth. Giant Zweihender lopping off people's heads, I mean, would he be able to carry that? That's a humble otter. But why not? And this lady otter. That's Hex Wraith Glow from Games Workshop. I've already, on another video, gently complained that in the white dwarf issues it looks like it's probably kind of glowing like Skeletal or something from one of the 80s cartoons, but actually when you use it, it, it just looks a bit dirty. But it's alright, I guess. And the eyes are obviously glowing with power. But I think that's it for today. Have a great evening, or day, wherever you are.